Brian Little is uh, not on the chairman's official uh, shortlist. Um, is that a mistake with an experienced figure like that, Colin? You know Brian? Well, I do. Brian, I mean, first of all, terrific man, terrific coach. And, you know, when he, when he was at Middles of Lush when we were young and he, he had the reserves and he had the opportunity to go to Darlington and took them out of the conference, um, you know. So what Kevin's saying, yeah, he's definitely got the affinity with the fans. But I think Darlington have got two ways to go. They either go for experience, and, and that probably is Brian Little, or they go with giving two young lads who, who really want to succeed at Darlington in, uh, in Martin Gray and Neil Madison. Um, so I think they've, they've, they've got the chicken and egg. It, it just depends on which way the chairman wants to go with the football club, I think. Is it an experienced manager's job? I mean, we've got Danny Wilson there at Hartlepool now. I mean, he's come in. You know your friend Martin didn't find it too easy, just briefly. Yeah. I must job. be on the short list. I'm only five foot seven. Yeah. Probably got no, no, no. <laughs> no, I made it. Leave it at yeah. that. Eh? Yeah. No, you just want to get it right. <laughs> two, this is two, two great clubs, and you just need. Oh, Fled, they get made decision decision quickly as well. Uh, the longer it goes on, the worse it is. Yep. Yeah, uh, hardly for world favourites for Saturday as well. I'm afraid. Uh, so that's what I should hope so. Today, because Darlington have joined that very exclusive. Well, in fact, not at all exclusive club. Just this very morning. Former Doncaster manager Dave Penny is the man to replace David Hodgson at the TFM Arena. Penny took Rovers from the conference to League One. Quakers fans will hope for a similar rise. Dave Penny was unveiled to the media this morning and immediately told reporters he had one goal for his first season in charge of Darlington. Promotion. It's, like I said, he's got fantastic surroundings in the ground, certainly. And... Um, you know, we, we want to make sure we try and fill this ground if we can, or, or certainly put some more punters in that comes normally. And um, by playing the kind of football that I do, which is attractive, high tempo, um, then I'm sure we'll be able to do that. There's been very hard decisions to make, but you know, and they they make hard decisions. And unfortunately, sometimes you've got to make these and disappoint people. But after seven months, I've, my gut feeling, I've got it right, and I hope the fans appreciate it as well. There's no messing around with the guy, and he knows his business. And this is one thing um, what I see. If you look at what he's taken to Doncaster, if he does that to this club, it will go exactly where I want to be. Martin Smith took charge of the team for the final time during Saturday's goalless derby at Hartlepool. He was named as Penny's assistant today. The new man was watching on from the stands at the weekend and saw Darlington produce a resolute defensive performance. James Brown should have won the game for Poole and Neil Wainwright cleared a last-minute Gary Little shot off the line. It keeps the Quakers one point above their big rivals in League Two. But will the new boss make wholesale changes or keep a squad built by former manager David Hodgson? Well, we've not really spoke about that. You know, you, you've got to bear in mind at what level you're at. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's, uh, there's, there's the long scenario initially. And, um, and I'm sure there's lots of clubs that uh, are looking to move players on in the January window as well. So um, they're the first avenues you go down. You want to keep your money in your pocket if you can and, uh, and save that for, for a rainy day. They've been dark days at Darlington over the past couple of weeks. George Horton says he has the man to blow away the dark cloud of David Hodgson's acrimonious departure. 15 managers in 15 years tells its own story. Perhaps finally, the penny has dropped. Ah, the penny's dropped. I knew he couldn't resist that. The week, of course, by announcing the former Doncaster manager, Dave Penny, as the man to follow David Hodgson. And by the following evening, he got his first win, a glossy performance in the Johnston's Paint Trophy at Tranmere. Uh, can't beat a winning start, can you, John? Yeah, he, more often than not, when a manager sort of uh, takes over, they do get a good result. You, know, you sometimes think, why do the chairmen keep sacking the manager every week? Uh, but yeah, it's a great player, and Carlo and Goma, great strike. And then the guy, the guy comes in and pushes Simon Johnson, which gives you a, an opportunity from the penalty spot. Uh, so you're looking for a great start, and it, uh, the local lad, Gitano <laughs> Gilly Alanza, right? <laughs> Finishes great, you know, and, and to be honest, all you want as a new manager is just to have a great start, get three points on the board, relax, he can get a little bit more time to just see what they can and what he can't do with the team. And uh, fingers crossed, it all goes, uh, goes well for him. But he's, he's a good manager, got great experience, and he knows the league. Good. Well, he wins in his first week in charge for Darlington's Dave Penny. A cup victory on Tuesday, followed by this one, nil against Chester. Mickey Cummings got the goal. Chester's frustration was complete when Ashley Westwood was sent off in stoppage time for elbowing Simon Johnson. Darlington were never really troubled by conference Southside Lewis. They won the tie at a canter. Martin Smith's injury time Perla, the pick of the bunch. have been drawn at home to Swansea City in the second round of the FA Cup. The Quakers managed to avoid slipping on a non-league banana skin on Saturday.
it wasn't as easy as the scoreline suggests, but the Quakers always had a little bit too much for their non-league opponents. Martin Smith made the crucial breakthrough. Darlington were two goals up when Patrick Collins reacted quickly to snap up a rebound. But the Sussex team were full of cup spirit, and Lee Farrell, who plays for the Great Britain deaf side, gave them hope. Not for long, though, Carlo Ngoma scored a couple of minutes later, and that was that. But the icing on the cake was very sweet indeed. Smith's second was a glorious volley. Darlow safely through. New manager Dave Penny still has his 100% record. On to League Two now, where Dave Penny goes from strength to strength as Darlington manager. A win at second place Lincoln made it four wins out of four for the new boss. Goals from Darren Holloway, Mickey Cummins, and eventually Simon Johnson were enough for a 3 1 win. You imagine everyone in League Two will sit up and take notice of that result. They looked like more Wolf for Hartley. Darlington had to overcome the loss of skipper Clark Kelty, who was rather harshly sent off for his second yellow card after only 28 minutes. The MK Dons hit the post in the second half, but Dave Penny's record in charge of Darlington is now played 5 1 5. They've developed a winning habit, and their persistence was rewarded when Neil Wainwright got the game's only goal. To the Potteries in January. And Darlington are still on course for a trip to Cardiff in the new year. This stunner from Martin Smith was worthy of winning any cup tie. It secured a 1 0 win over Mansfield at the TFM Arena last night. The Quakers are into the northern semi final of the Johnston Paints Trophy. And that's six wins out of six for new boss Dave Penny. Darlington made it through to yesterday's draw. Mm, I spoke to Dave Penny last week and he did say that this game against Swansea would be a good barometer of how his team were doing. And it, it looked good after a couple of minutes, Martin Smith's opening goal of the game. But there was an early tactical substitution for Swansea. Thomas Butler's played for Darlington, Hartlepool, Sunderland taken off. And uh, they reorganised Leon Britton, no relation to the old... Uh, Home secretary, <laughs> bottom level, Dave Penny, who Knowledge. has been linked already with a whole job today. Sorry, Darlington Can't fans, I'm to hear that. And then Andy Robinson, it was, who put Swansea ahead, no relation to the England, England rugby, rugby coach just departed. <laughs> and finally, here he comes, Abdul Saeed Adibeo Akinfenwa, no relation to anybody with a name like that. <laughs> but he uh, ensured that Darlington miss out on a trip to Sheffield United in the next round. But where could Hartlepool have got? Darlington went through November and beaten, and Dave Penny just missed out on the League Two Manager of the Month award. This month, different story, even though Martin Smith put them ahead at Edgeley Park. Stockport hit back with four goals in 18 minutes, Tess Bramble making it 1-1. Adam Proudlock then grabbed his fifth goal in six games, showing how his career has revived since joining Stockport. Tony Dinning, who rejoined Stockport in the summer after six years away, was able to claim his first goal since making his return. And Stockport hadn't finished. Bramble doubling his goals tally for the season when he neatly got his second of the game. Darlington were given some hope five minutes before half-time when they were awarded a penalty for a foul on Alan Armstrong, who eight years ago had left Stockport for Middlesbrough. Clark Kelty did the rest. Six goals before half-time, just one after the break. Stephen Gleeson on loan from Wolves, off to celebrate his first senior goal. Run of eight straight defeats ended at home to the Posh, but it was Peterborough who took the lead, courtesy of Adam Smith. This was his first goal for the club. David Wheater making his debut after joining on loan from Middlesbrough equalised just before half time. Remember Julian Joachim? Well, Peterborough certainly will. He gave Darlington the lead just after half time, and ten minutes later scored again to give Darlington a two goal cushion. This was his fourth goal against them. Darlington followed up on their return to winning ways in League Two with the points on the road last night. Dave Penny's side were already a goal down when Evan Horwood was sent off with seven minutes remaining. It looked as though another defeat was on the cards, but Darlow's win over Peterborough at the weekend seems to have brought back a little of the confidence that was sapped by that eight-game losing streak. And then with just three minutes remaining, Tommy Wright popped up with an equaliser. The striker had only signed from Barnsley that afternoon on a one-month loan. Penny might want to make it permanent after that. So, a point for the Quakers against the Shakers. Well, Not much joy so far for Alan Buckley. Half a dozen successive defeats in his latest spell as Grimsby boss. If current owner had tucked away the Mariners' first half penalty, their luck might have changed. Instead, the home side was on course for a sixth game without a goal and a defeat inflicted by Darlington's Tim Ryan. Their push for automatic promotion from League Two. The playoffs is probably the best Darlington can hope for, but they've got a few problems to address first.
It's a cliche, but being a Darlington fan this season really has been a bit of a roller coaster ride. There was the change of manager. The initial impact of that was a six game winning streak. That was followed by eight consecutive defeats. The Quakers are four unbeaten at the moment, but that's not the end of Dave Penny's struggles. The problem was, while the team were tumbling down the league, attendances were tumbling here at the TFM Arena. The 2,300 attendance at the last home game against Peterborough was the lowest ever for a league game since Darlow moved to their new home. An extra thousand turned up for Saturday's visit of Wrexham. They probably wish they'd stayed at home. A poor performance against a poor Wrexham side was epitomised by the scrappiest of opening goals. Neil Wainwright's clearance hit Lee McEverly and rebounded straight to Simon Spender, who put the Welsh side in front. Tommy Wright's penalty just before half-time earned Darlington a point, but the manager knows that merely papered over the cracks. Let's forget the playoffs. Um, we've got to make sure we start performing well before we can even think about that. And uh, today wasn't good enough. We, you know, we fall unbeaten, two wins, two draws, and uh, we have performed probably better away from home than we have at home at the moment. It is a big stadium, and you're never going to get to generate a fantastic atmosphere. You know, we've 27,000 and probably having three or four in here. Um, but you've got to deal with that. The players have got to deal with that, and uh, and we've got to deal with that and try and give them give them to so much shout about. No such problem. Macclesfield had to show all their battling qualities here. Ricky Ravenhill just joined on loan from Grimsby, got Darlington's goal. For those who anticipated a rerun of the opening day four goal thrashing they handed Macclesfield were to be disappointed. In fact, keeper Lee Jones kept them ahead temporarily. Whatever the gaffer had to say in the changing room at half-time didn't sink in until Alan Navarro with just four minutes left level the scores. But it's a measure of how much Paul Ince has achieved that he will probably be disappointed with this draw. Meanwhile, have extended their unbeaten run to six games with a 2-1 win over Bristol Rovers. Brad Blandal scored his first goal for the club after just seven minutes heading home the rebound after his original shot was blocked. The Quakers extended their lead late in the second half. Michael Cummins' chip hit the back post and was bundled across the line by Stephen Phillips. The Rovers grabbed a late consolation goal through Craig Disley. Darlington now move up to 10th in League Two. All the action in the second half at the Darlington Arena, where the Quakers scored twice in five minutes. Ian Miller on debut. Ironically, he'd been on loan to Boston since November. Neil Wainwright's been at Darlow a little longer and he celebrated his 150th league start for the club with a well-taken second. After that 6-0 drubbing to Grimsby last weekend, Boston are in free fall. And they'll have to do without defender Brad Thomas for a while. Referee Phil Jocelyn sent him packing for two bookable offences. Swindon also seems set to make up ground on the leaders as they took an early lead against Darlington through Andy Nicholas. But Darlington are a tough nut to crack these days. A second half goal from Martin Smith stretched his team's unbeaten run to eight matches and made the final score 1-1. In the holding on to their own promotion dream, the Quakers are up to eighth place in League Two after last night's win over Accrington Stanley. They took the lead when Greg Blundell crossed for Tommy Wright to score. And Dave Penny's side were two goals up before half an hour had passed. Martin Smith's centre picked out Blundell and he did the rest. A poor Mullen goal pulled back Accrington, made the Quakers work hard for their win, but the result means they're now just five points off the playoff places. Chris Roberts quit as Torquay chairman on Wednesday, just four months after taking over. He's been replaced by Keith Richardson, who says the priority is ensuring that the club stay in the league. It'll be a struggle, a bit like Lee Thorpe's vain attempt to persuade the officials that Torquay should have had a penalty. Julian Joshim scored Darlington's late winner. Just one goal settled this game in Darlington's favour. Tommy Wright ensured Darlington's unbeaten run extended to 13 games. He had the final say in this game of head tennis. Darlington remained in the chase too after their Good Friday draw in Cheshire. Simon Yeo's goal had the Quakers in trouble six minutes after half-time. But Chester squandered several opportunities to make the game safe and they paid the price right at the end. Lawrence Wilson's challenge on Greg Blundell put a point in sight for Darlow, and against his old club, Blundell completed the punishment. Then we go to Lincoln now. I mean, Paddy's cleared it there. I mean, we've been fortunate here. Blundell picks it up. I mean, this is a tremendous cross now. And a great near post header off of Jochim and that. And again, you put you in the lead, you think, come on lads, we need to win this one at home now. 
Unfortunately, again, corner here. Put into it's a bit of a melee on a six-yard box, and Beavers jumps to head home. And in the middle, you'll see a carbon copy now, and this is brilliant because if you watch, you think, oh, that's the same one. No, it's a goal. No, it's not. Great save off of Sam Russell. What I love about Sam Russell is the fact they all just get on with it. Lincoln thought, think they've scored. Look now on the line. Was that a great save off of Ricky Raven? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was in the hands come out there and save it. Trick, it was funny all the first. I thought it's the same call. Last week's defeat by the MK Dons effectively ended Darlington's playoff challenge and the fans made their disappointment felt with the lowest crowd of the season, just 2,700. The stayaways missed a decent game, sparked by Matt Bloomfield's opener for the visitors, before Neil Wainwright scored either side of half-time to put Darlow in front. His second was worth turning up for on its own, a superb run and finish for his fifth of the campaign. But almost immediately, Wickham, who've blown their own playoff hopes by going nine games without a win, were level, thanks to Jermaine Easter's 24th of the season. And that's how it stayed until 20 minutes from time, when the game was settled by another goal to Saver. Dave Rousen clinching it from 25 yards for the home side.